Hey, future respiratory therapist. So today I got a topic for you here I want to talk about, and that is when we talk about the trigger mechanism when it comes to mechanical ventilation. Now, learning mechanical ventilation can be a struggle, okay? It can be hard when you're in your mechanical ventilation class. And then when you apply it, when you get into the clinic setting, it can sometimes become even more complicated. But my goal today is to just break down one simple component of mechanical ventilation. And what I want to talk about is the variable that describes what starts the inspiratory phase of the breath when talking about mechanical ventilation. Okay, so there's typically three variables that you have to understand. You have to know what starts the breath, that's trigger. You have to know what ends the breath, meaning what terminates inspiration, okay? That's cycle, okay? And then you also need to know what will not be exceeded during this mode of mechanical ventilation, and that is limit. Now, all three of those together probably could constitute another video that I can uh, probably put together for you guys uh, here relatively quickly. But today I just want to focus on trigger. How does a patient or how does the vent know when to start the inspiratory phase of a mechanical breath? Okay. Now this applies to whether it's a, a mechanical breath in assist control, if it's a synchronized breath in SIMV, or if it's any type of spontaneous breath in any mode that allows for spontaneous breathing, okay? That's what we're talking about here today. So when you learn these modes, when you learn all of the variables with all of the different modes, it can seem like a lot, okay? Because you think about assist control, you think about SIMV, think about assist control volume control, assist control pressure control, SIMV volume, SIMV pressure, CPAP pressure support, and you have all these different you know, um, aspects of these modes that you need to know. Now, my goal here today is to simplify this one concept down for you to the very most basic level, okay? And we're talking about trigger in every single mode, okay? And you have to ask yourself, what starts the breath? Okay, think about a gun. How do you make a gun fire? What starts the firing of a gun? The trigger, okay? So that's the first thing I want you to remember. Trigger is the start of inspiration. Now, the second thing I want you to remember is no matter what mode you're talking about, the ventilator can start a breath and or the patient can initiate a breath, okay? And it all comes down to this. If you're in a mode of mechanical ventilation where the ventilator gives a set tidal volume or a set pressure, okay, and there's time, there's a set respiratory rate, then the ventilator trigger is always time. The vent gives a breath based off of a time trigger. If you're in assist control and you're set on a rate of 10, then the ventilator is going to give a breath, initiate that breath every six, six seconds, okay? That's a time trigger, okay? Now, if you're in assist control and the patient initiates a breath, then the vent says, okay, I gave a breath because the patient initiated it, but then the ventilator sees it as a machine breath because it's giving a set tidal volume and a set flow in assist control. Or it's giving a set pressure at a set I time in pressure control AC, okay? In that case, the vent is still operating off of time. I gave a breath, I'm not supposed to give another one for six seconds. If you're on a rate of 12, then it's gonna give a time triggered breath Every five seconds, 60 seconds divided by 12 is five seconds, okay? So you have to understand how does the vent know to give a breath. And in every single mode, it's time, okay? 
time triggered on the ventilator side. Now, if the patient is allowed to either one, trigger an assisted breath, trigger a spontaneous breath, or even trigger a pressure support breath, which is still a spontaneous breath, okay? If the patient is allowed to breathe over the set rate, okay, which is what we see 99% of the time, like I don't think anybody's out there using controlled mechanical ventilation, okay? There's nobody out there saying, I'm sorry, patient, if you want to breathe, you can't, okay? So most of the time, in these modes, being primarily assist control or SIMV, the patient is allowed to trigger a breath. On the patient side of things, the patient's trigger is always pressure or, not and, or flow, always. You set that as the respiratory therapist. You will decide if you want this patient to be set in pressure triggering or flow triggering. Now, pressure triggering is typically thought out to be harder to trigger than flow. And that's true. If you've ever breathed on a mechanical ventilator before, then you would be able to tell the difference between a pressure trigger and a flow trigger. Flow trigger is more sensitive and is easier to cycle to, to trigger on. Okay, not cycle, to trigger. Okay? So typically flow is thought to be easier. But pressure is an option. Okay? Now the way this works is that if the patient takes a breath and you're in pressure trigger, then the patient's diaphragm drops, intrathoracic pressure decreases, that pulls the pressure in the ventilator circuit down to the set pressure triggering set. Okay, so if you have it set at say two centimeters of water pressure, then as the diaphragm drops and it generates a negative drop in the closed circuit of minus two, centimeters of water pressure, then the vent says, oh, you want a breath? Here you go. Take it however, whatever mode you're in. If you're in assist control, then you will get an assisted breath. If you're in SIMV, then you will either get a synchronized breath, depending on when that patient takes that makes that effort, or you will get a true spontaneous breath, okay? But it's still triggered off of the patient's ability to to trigger the breath off of a drop in pressure, okay? Now, flow triggering, like I said earlier, is typically thought out to be easier, okay? And flow trigger is another option. The way flow triggering works is that when the patient wants a breath, they will their diaphragm will drop and that will pull flow out of the circuit. Now, there's a bias flow that is constantly running through the vent circuit, okay? And so if you have a bias flow of five liters set, okay, then the vent is sending out five liters and getting back five liters. And no breaths will be given other than the vent timed breaths, okay? But in the case where the patient's diaphragm drops, their brain says, hey, take a breath. The diaphragm drops. Flow is taking away from the bias flow, the vent sent out five liters, but only gets back three liters per minute. Then the vent says, oh, I'm missing flow. We have a flow setting of two. I sent out five, only got back three. The patient pulled out that two. They want a breath, give it to them. It happens like this. It's instantly, okay? It's not something that's lags or it's like, oh, the vent's got to do this calculation and then seven seconds later they get a breath. This is all happening instantaneously, okay? So when flow is lost from the circuit, the vent says, oh, the patient is sucking flow out of the circuit, so it's time for me to allow that patient to breathe. If I'm in AC, then I will give them the settings that are set. If I'm in AC volume, I will give them a set tidal volume at the set flow because they asked for one. If I'm in pressure control AC, then I will give them the set pressure at the set I time. Okay? But all of this is based off the patient pulling flow out of the circuit. And the vent recognizes the loss of flow and says, oh, you want a breath? Here you go. Take it spontaneously. Take it, have a, have a spontaneous breath if you're in SIMV or CPAP. If you're in 
um, AC, then it's going to say, oh, you want a breath? Here you go. I'm told to give you a breath. Okay. I'm going to do another video breaking down AC versus SIMV. So you understand those two terms because you have got to know those two terms. You've got to understand what happens in AC versus what happens in SIMV and how you can set those and use those modes to best benefit your patient. Okay, so that's coming next. But for this, I want you to understand this. Take this away. The ventilator has a job to do and it is to deliver breaths anytime there's a set rate set. It delivers those breaths and will trigger those breaths based off of time. If the patient wants a breath, it will be delivered based off of a drop in pressure or the sucking of flow or the absence of flow being taken out of the circuit, which means the patient took some and the vent will allow the patient to breathe and take either a spontaneous or an assisted or a synchronized breath. Okay, All of this is over trigger. How does the ventilator know when to give a breath. When do we start inspiration? Okay. I hope this makes sense. I hope it helps. I hope you learn something and I hope it helps to clarify things. And most importantly, I hope it helps you on your exams and well beyond that while you're taking care of your patients. Okay. Because this stuff matters. Okay. Real life example. You have a patient in SIMV and the patient is paralyzed. Lots of secretions but you still have spontaneous efforts happening. Why? Well, maybe you're in flow trigger, which we've, already which we've already said is easier to trigger, and maybe you have auto, -psych, auto triggering happening. Okay, This is when the ventilator detects that, I think the patient's asking for a breath because there's an interruption in flow, and it gives a breath. In that case, you probably need to switch to pressure triggering so that the patient definitely has to drop their diaphragm, drop the pressure to know that the patient is really triggering the breath or is it an auto trigger that's happening due to an interruption of flow or your sensitivity is set too lightly, okay? So you gotta understand this stuff, guys. It's, 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 it's what we do, it's what we're the experts in, okay? So understand it, take it to the bank, comment, questions, anything you have, I'd love to answer them. And I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Okay.